to another IGCSE video. This time we're focusing on the country of Australia, specifically related to the concept of underpopulation. So without further ado, let's begin. So just to give you some background information about Australia, well, it contains seven states. Each state, as you can see on the image, has its own capital as well. This is highlighted in red, such as um, Melbourne, for example. So the learning objectives of this revision session is to analyse underpopulation in, in Australia, specifically related to the different social, economic and environmental effects that have occurred. And hopefully by the end of this session, you'll be able to explain the different factors that have caused underpopulation in Australia. So looking at some of the previous past, past, past paper resources. This was from June 2021. This is paper 1-2. So you can clearly see here the, the question asks for the causes and the consequences of underpopulation. So here's the mark scheme you can see. As always, we want to be really focusing on level three. So that includes making sure your statements that you give are comprehensive Unlike other population case studies, this needs to include some place-specific references, which we will look at. So just to summarise, when we're looking at Australia as a case study, we really want to be focusing on two aspects. So how and why is underpopulation occurring on, in Australia? And what are the impacts or the consequences or the effects of this underpopulation? So this is, the, I suppose, the first key aspect um, is looking at the size of Australia. And this will, we'll look at this in more detail. Um, but just to give you some comparison, the population of um, in Australia is around 24 to 25 million. I mean, if you compare this to the United Kingdom, which has a population of 65 million, um, it's clearly a lot lower than this country. However, if we look at the size of Australia in comparison to the UK, you could fit the United Kingdom into Australia 22 times. Again, if we compare this to a, a country which is similar in its size, America, um, Australia has a population, as we have just mentioned, of around 25 million. Compare that to America's, which has um, a population of, let's say, 320 million, for example. So you can clearly see there's an underpopulation crisis in Australia. So the first key factor and the main factor really for this underpopulation crisis in Australia is due to the physical geography of Australia. So looking at this Corapleth map here, you can clearly see in the central and western parts, even some parts of the east, there's a very low population density, less than 0 0.1. So the average population density of Australia is three people per kilometer squared. So you can see, why is this area so low? Well, if we look at this topographic map, the main reason is it's arid landscape. It's desert here. So if we were to write this in the exam, we really want to develop and yeah, um, make our statements comprehensive. So why is this causing an underpopulation problem? What's the issue of um, deserts in sustaining a population? What, for, what impact does this have on different supplies, such as water supplies, food supplies? So you'd go along those lines and develop it this way. So suppose that's one physical aspect. It's always good to have a comparative um, but more in a social or human aspect. And one other reason could be its low natural increase. So just to remind you, natural increase is birth rate minus death rate. This does not take into account migration. So some data I've retrieved in 2020, Australia's natural increase was 5.86 persons per thousand population. So although the population is increasing slowly, um, like I say, it's not really at a, a, an incredibly fast speed here, okay? And if you were to develop this and write this in the exam, you've got to think of the reasons why. Why is 
there are low natural increase in Australia. Well, the main reason would be the birth rate is low. Thinking about why is a birth rate low? Well, perhaps women are focused more on their education, for example. Perhaps they're getting married later in life. So you develop along these lines. That's looking at some of the um, causes. The question also asks for the consequences or the impacts or the effects. It might be worded like this, for example. So one impact and the main impact is to combat its underpopulation problem. Australia heavily relies on migration. So the current net migration rate for Australia in 2023 is 5.173 per thousand of a population. So just to remind you what net migration is, this is the difference between the number of immigrants and emigrants. So the number of people entering a country as well as leaving a country. So you can clearly see more people are coming to Australia and staying there rather than leaving this. So again, you've got to think, why is this a problem? If you just mention the net migration is high, that's quite a simple statement. We really want to develop these statements. So why could this be a problem? Um, well, firstly, perhaps there could be an issue with discrimination on the migrants themselves, especially if they're from backgrounds that's completely um, culturally different to Australia. They may find it difficult to settle into an already native local population, for example, so they may face issues themselves. Also, the influx of migra migrants may cause inflation to rise, certainly house prices to rise and general goods to to increase. Certainly if there's a lower population as well, this population will be taxed heavier. Um, another um, issue with regards to Australia's underpopulation is a lack of skilled workers, hence why Australia heavily re relies on migration to kind of fill this gap um, in its skilled workers. Okay, so for quite a short lecture. Um, just to go back to to the mark scheme, you can have a look at this for yourself. Okay, the key thing is making sure you include comprehensive and accurate statements. I mean, some place place specific reference you could mention about the Great Victorian Desert if you're relating this back to climate and relief. You could talk about also. Um, where people are actually living in Australia. And this would be along the west coast in, in cities such as Sydney and Brisbane, for example. So they're your place-specific references that you would use in this question. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope you find this useful. And see you soon for the next lecture. Thank you. Bye-bye.